good morn de Thursday. Hope you, by the time you get this, I hope you had a nice Easter. It's, uh, it's a bit foggy today, but it should be a good day. Um, <clears throat> I thought I'd not so much put my money where my mouth is, but maybe give a tangible example of the temperature difference. Using some thermometers, because I like all sorts of different ometers. In our insulated space in the shed, where we're living at the moment, it is currently 19 degrees. Outside, I think it was 5 degrees. The house last night, it was 26 in here. You know, it was closed up all day, and when I walked in, it was warm, but it, I just felt like it was... It wasn't stale, it was just, for some reason, it felt humid. Maybe it was the temperature, maybe there was high humidity in the air. But anyway, I opened the windows up the top, opened two or three windows down the bottom. I had both doors open. There was a good breeze and I could, standing on the ladder up near this window up here, the chimney effect was really, was really good. <clears throat> So uh, I'm very pleased how, how those windows work. They work as intended. Ventilation, exhaust, chimney effect up high, all the windows down the bottom, cool air coming in, all the warm air disappearing out the top. It was really good. Anyway, it chilled down, I'm guessing to around 15 to 17, look, maybe 20, I suppose it, it, it um, <laughs> I didn't check the thermostat, the thermometer, because um, it needs a bit of time and I was in a rush last night. Anyway, it chilled down significantly from 26. I came back in last night and it was 23 again. It is, if you can see that, GoPros don't like close-ups. It's 21. Just to try and put some figures to what I've been describing or trying to describe before, uh, put some figures on it so that you've got something to relate it to. Anyway, Alex is coming today. We've got uh, hopefully some cladding to do on the pop-up. I've got a drone that's about to run out of battery or land. It's a nice fog around the place today. Pretty standard. Sort of what we're used to. But let's go get coffee and then do some cladding. Woza. It's a bit bright. G'day. It's a week or so after Easter and um, little things are happening. I should beep. Uh, we've got the top of the pop-up sort of clad. So Alex helped us for a day <clears throat> a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, to get most of that clad. We finished it off the other day. We got a flashing across the windows at the front of the pop-up. We put in three cavity sliding doors the other day. So we've got this guy here that crosses the entryway to the vanity from sort of the kitchen lounge area. Put this other guy in for the toilet, which closes off the toilet, and there's one that runs through there and will finish against here to close off the shower room. I also installed this attic ladder, which is very cool. So we've got enough space to sort of step around without opening this back door. It folds away pretty easy.
really enjoying the space so far. We've had quite a few visitors and we've had lunch, I suppose in the lounge room, really. But uh, yeah, it's been really nice, quite pleasant. So yeah, it's holding its temperature very well, even with the, uh, the lack of insulation on those couple of walls and with all of the glass exposed, we're only dropping a few degrees overnight and it's still very comfortable in here. It's a glorious morning here. The fellow should really ride a motorbike to work, but got things to do. Really loving our view now. Now that we can sort of sit in the house and, well, shouldn't really be sitting around doing nothing, should be working on it. But anyway, really enjoying the view. It's been difficult in the shed. We've only got two windows in the shed. One of them faces the view, but the other one is pretty much just facing the house. But uh, it makes washing up <laughs> sort of enjoyable because you've got this lovely view to look out on. And it's going to be even better in the house with those nice big windows in the front. Morning all. So Alex came down the other day and we did get some cladding done. Going to take you on the roof and show you what we got up to. Clad the north side, which is good. Erica and I got some flashings on down the bottom here. And then uh, Alex and I finished the other one further along. And uh, we've got the centerpiece in there done all the way across the top. It's the only place that we're going to actually need to continue cladding above windows. And uh, we got this first panel on this side done. Hello world. It's a nice sunny morning today. What I'm going to do to start with is silicon up some trims so you can see all of the masking tape everywhere. That masking tape's just there to hold the uh, powder coated aluminium corner in place. I've got to fill up this hole in here. Just pile a heap of goop in there to stop water from traveling to the side and then inside the cladding and run a bead, hopefully nice and neat, down the side. Let's do some stuff. Silicon and I have a love-hate relationship. <clears throat> I like doing it. I like seeing it done but it just doesn't behave for me. <sighs> anyway, as long as it seals, who's gonna see it all the way up here? Oh yes, that's nice, I like that. A little way down. It's not terribly shameful. I'll show you this bit because that looks all right. It's a nice little bead in there until you get up to this like that. Actually, this stuff might work well for me. This is, um, lots of people use soapy water or a little bit of, the lick's not so good because the bacteria in your mouth, you put it on your finger, you push it into the silicon, the silicon goes moldy straight away. Uh, this stuff is, I don't know, it's just a glorified soapy water, but it's the same brand as the silicon. I've had pretty good success with it in other situations. Um, if you haven't got silicon stuck to the surface and you spray this on it, it won't stick. So you need to make sure that the bead of silicon is where you want it, and then you spray this all over everything, including your finger, for places where you don't want it to stick. And then you can pretty much treat silicon as you as you like as if it's not sticky because as soon as you spray this stuff on it it isn't oh no i've started do i keep going nah. this is what i mean by love hate relationship where do you stop? 
Stop touching it. Stop it. Let's try and smudge that back into place. And then leave it. Don't touch it. Stop it. Okay. So that big splodge has gone. I've just sort of smoothed this down a little bit. Tried to work it into the other one, but I'm not going to go too overboard. We want a reasonably wide bead of silicon here for a little bit of expansion. It's also our first point of waterproofing around the windows, so the more the merrier. That's what I'm going with, but it should seal quite nicely. Now for the other side. Oh look, there's silicon everywhere. I've already worked on this. Again, I've got to try and get a big goop up in here. Just heaps, just give it a shot. Deformed schnozzle. It's nothing personal. Less is more, or more is more, or something. The more the merrier. The less, the more merry, or something. I might just, I might just call that done, I think. There's a little dag in here, don't touch it. Stop it, don't touch it. Stop it. Less. Less more. Ah, where do you stop? Looks great. Looks great from where I'm standing. And then of course this flashing comes all the way up underneath the windows. So as long as it's sealed past that a little bit, that'll be fine. So this window is finished nearly the top of this flashing it's not a flashing is it a flashing it's sort of a flashing the top of this aluminium angle just needs some goop coming around over the top of it in case water gets gee that's unlikely but anyway we'll see how neat we can be with it Don't touch it. Ah. Stop it. A blind man would be pleased to see it. But then a blind man probably wouldn't be watching my YouTube videos. So if you're out there, what are you doing? This one's got a bit of a gap behind it, so I probably should be doing this. Yeah, if I don't stop now, I'm going to work my way the whole way down and it'll all just look horrible. So, that's where we're stopping. One issue we've had with these windows is they have a protective film on the outside for shipping and the protective film has done a really good job of saving the powder coating from getting scratched but where it's been on a little bit long I think probably the sashes were built first and uh, the protective film has left a chalky sort of resin dried up glue stuff on there. Uh, we've really only found one product that's good at getting rid of it and it does it pretty easy but it's a just a bit of a time-consuming prick of a job so I guess I'm gonna have to do some of that gonna do it from the inside because it's so much warmer in here it's 
So once the mechanism's off, the window just folds down on the inside. Got a nice big chunky bit of foam under there to stop the handle from hitting the slab. And now we've got nice easy access to the face of the window. Best product I've found for this, we've tried a couple. This one's called Solvit. They reckon it's good for graffiti and tar and sap and all sorts of stuff. Um, running a bit light on, but the boss is at the shops, so I've asked her to get some more for me. It's made by CRC. Well, I did not know that. CRC is the opposing brand to my favourite water dispersant of the 40th variety. And this stuff works pretty quick, actually. So I've just been rubbing it in. You can feel when there's a big lip of glue that needs extra attention. Gravelly dirt or rocks or something at the bottom here that's been blown into it from the wind. Might be pretty good for our first pass. Just do one pass through the bottom there and get rid of that gravel. This rag's had just about all it can take. Smells good too. Just smells like oranges. It smells like a, I don't know, slightly modified orange. It doesn't quite smell like fresh orange. It doesn't have that sweetness, but it does, smells pretty good. It doesn't smell chemically at all. Right, so one last little pass. Just to make sure we've got it all. And wipe off any residue that was left from the last, last run over. Cool, that'll do me. Oh, will it? Yeah, that's all right. That's all good. So that's all of the gummy residue taken off the surface. That's all quite clean and dry now. Looks quite nice with that fleck in there. So then all we need to do is just lift him back up into place. Put these straps back over. Make sure they're locked down. And we're back to a normal window. Normal, is it normal? No, we're back to a window. Right, next one. this update goes it's only going to be a quick video there's no real building per se going on at the moment there's a long slog a long slow slog I suppose moving forward finishing off the inside of the house uh, and cladding the outside it's going to be a very much an ongoing project so the next thing on our agenda is going to be the plasterer they've got to come in and they're providing lowered ceilings. So all of the roof at the moment on the inside, the ceilings as they are at the moment, they're the underside of the roof and that has a, a pitch to it. We're dropping the ceilings flat and that requires some framework, which is, I believe it's threaded rod. They make a connection into the SIP panels in the roof. They install a threaded rod with a clip or something on the bottom that what we call fur and channel goes onto and the plasterboard screws onto that. So that framework needs to be installed. Then we'll get the sparkies in to finish off their wiring and put lights and things like that where they need to be, run switches. We need to run our ducting for the heat recovery ventilation system, uh, some data cabling, aerial cables, all that sort of stuff. Everything that goes into the ceiling, some plumbing. So once all of the electricery and the plumbing and the ducting has been run on top of that ceiling uh, framework, then we'll install some bats over the top of that so that the plasterers can come and finish the sheets off plaster the ceilings, hopefully plaster the walls if we've got everything done by that stage. That will pretty much finish off the inside until fit off. Then we need to really get stuck into the cladding. So uh, look, it's, it's moving ahead, but it is slow. Anyway, just a quick update, let you know what's going on. We are still working on things, but it's, not, uh, it's nowhere near as exciting as the main construction of everything, putting up the panels and the, the framework, the um, trusses, roofing panels all of that sort of stuff that was pretty exciting gear now it's just that 
long, slow, arduous finishing work that requires a little bit more attention to detail. Anyway, appreciate you dropping by and saying g'day. Thanks for checking us out. We'll catch you later on.